Hey there, I'm Miska and welcome to Hitscan. Big news for Valorant, we've gotten a lot of insight into what's going to happen after launch in a video blog post type of thing from Anna Donald, the executive producer. With me here is Ryan hello, hello. to figure this out and uh, we'll talk about all this madness. They just sort of drop these things out of nowhere, I feel like, but uh, maybe it's better that way to just uh, get it very unexpectedly. So uh, yeah, where do you want to start? I guess from the very beginning, what the hell are we in? There's been a lot of talk about battle passes, content, new agents, new maps. What's the cadence going to be over the year we spoke to Morello before he wasn't quite sure it's sort of been announced so the general gist of it is it all has to do with the cadence of content and how much is coming to Valorant we can talk about that in a second because it's actually kind of crazy but the general gist is that there are going to be two episodes a year these episodes last six months and these are the overarching content drops I suppose it would be the Valorant will be getting within those episodes those six months worth of content there are going to be three acts these acts last in two months, and these are the battle passes. We're in Act 1 currently. We know the battle pass, what's in it. This is going to be the case for every two months. It started at the start of June. The next Act, Act 2, will be sometime early August, and so on and so forth. The interesting thing is that they're sort of talking about the launch of Agents here. Every two months, six a year, that's more than Overwatch has ever done. And I think this is the first thing to go over, because six Agents a year, Miska, in a game like this, I think is crazy too much. I mean, that sounds pretty insane. I don't know if it's like too much because we're only going to know that once it's actually in the game. But if I think about Siege as well, Rainbow Six Siege, and how often they add operators and how some of those operators can really change the game and meta so quickly, then yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different operators in Siege. And I think if we think about Valorant, there's, well, a decent amount of agents already. A few more will be nice, but... You know, when, when that turns into six a year, then <laughs> maybe it's a bit too often. I don't think people are going to have time to figure all of that out before there's another one out. That's what kind of worries me, that it's a little bit too close to each other. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. But all in all, yeah, may maybe it's a bit too much. I think that's the general reaction. But at the same time, content, right? Like, it's pretty cool to see that they're dedicating to so much stuff already and that there's going to be a lot of updates. I think think about it this way as well. We are halfway now because it's pretty much the start of July, halfway through this episode already with this battle pass. So we're expecting a new agent in August. To me, that's crazy fast. And I'm really excited to see what this agent is. We've done videos in the past on who it could be. And there's even a silhouette, actually, which I'll show you on screen. It gives you a bit of an idea on what they may look like. We can talk about what we want to see and stuff in a second, but I really am surprised at six agents a year. I just don't want to see that dwindle over time, like the content start to slow down. I'd rather them set a, you know, mediocre cadence of like four agents a year, but they can keep to those four agents for the next five to ten years instead of it slowing down or stopping as time goes on. But I am really impressed at how much... Uh, Valorant is putting out content and it's you know great to sort of watch all of this stuff happening. It's keeping people interested, but you did mention a good point. I don't know how pros are going to manage with two uh, a new agent every two months. That's going to be a lot of metas sort of aggressively being chosen and working its way out. Yeah, but it is also really exciting to think about it in that way that it's not too far away from the next act and the next big content drop. I'm a little bit stressed out with my battle pass, though. I want to finish that thing. But I do feel like... I'm not like, halfway done, yeah. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot. But I do feel like when I when I think about how much Reyna has been figured out in a way by the players and that she doesn't feel like this insane new character, at least for me. Like, yeah, she's strong and yeah, she's cool and she's got a lot of flashy plays and a lot of good players playing her in ranked. It's still that sort of thing where that at least has me a little bit more calm about the whole situation because I feel like she's kind of figured out the next character will probably be somewhat figured out. And speaking of which, that silhouette, I just wanted to comment on that real quick. It kind of looks like she's wearing some sort of like, I don't know, like army hat. I don't know what they're called. Uh, but a beret? Yeah, that's it. Like brimstones? Yeah, kinda, right? Like, it kinda looks like that on the left side there, at least of the top, uh, in my opinion. And she's clearly got a frenzy as well, which I wonder if that is the uh, signature, or well, a skin, or whatever you want to call it, for that character. So we got the, uh, the um, frenzy for Phoenix, and then we've got, well, this one now as well, I guess. So, cool to see that. I'm looking forward to it. Anything you want to wanna talk about in terms of, uh, well, acts and episodes, or should we move on? Well, I mean, like, it's other stuff that's going to be in there. I think loads of agents is a good thing, but I also want to see more maps. Like, it'd be really interesting to see a new map uh, towards the start of the next act. I don't necessarily expect it. I expect more maybe act three, so that would be, like, 
October time where we might get a new map, but I said it's been great. I just want more maps. I don't want to be stuck playing like the four maps that we've got for an eternity. I want to see like as many as Counter-Strike has, I think, and I don't really think that's going to be too far away, but I'm really impressed with Valorant's dedication to putting out content. It's almost rivaling Fortnite, which is something I would never expect anybody else to get close to. I think especially when it comes to the Fortnite stuff, when you look at the Battle Pass feature, which I think is great for Valorant, you know, people have been talking about, like, the, the prices of skins and stuff like that, but the Battle Pass is, like, good, consistent gear that you can get, weapon skins and stuff, and that's going to be on a, a weekly, ba bi-weekly basis, sorry, that we're going to be seeing new skins in the store, but also three sets of weapon skins in each Battle Pass. A Battle Pass every two months, that's a lot of guns, that's a lot of skins, that's a lot of cool stuff that people can work and grind on to get their hands on. And I think that's, you know, great. I think that's a really good support for a free-to-play game, and I hope people sort of recognize that, I guess. Yeah, I think it's been talked about before. I'm sure that there's an answer to this, and some may, may at some point, I remember it being asked, that... It would be really cool to see community sort of uh, submissions for skins that the devs can pick out and highlight and things like that and make happen down the line. Because if there's going to be this many, I feel like there is place for that. It's just a matter of, you know, obviously going through that whole ordeal that Valve have been through with Counter-Strike to make sure that there's nothing copyrighted and there's no stolen art or all that, which is a bit tricky, but I would love to see something along those lines at least. Uh, either way, more skins. I'm sure people will be interested in that. Whenever there's new skins, people love sharing them and talking about them and sort of reacting to that stuff so we'll be having all of that on this channel whenever there's either some leaks or some new stuff being added with new updates and uh yeah that's gonna be good anything else they also mentioned stuff when it came to new game modes i know everybody's wanting like a death match but they didn't really give any new details they're just trying to work out exactly when those kind of bits of content should be coming into the game whether it's at the start of an episode which is like a bigger beat you know like the the Fortnite black hole explosion thing that's how i see an episode being Whereas the acts are kind of like the seasons, and I think the definition of seasons is really interesting and important, something that Anna Donlan did highlight herself. So definitely check out the full video, but we wanted to do like a quick breakdown of some really important bits in there that people may have missed because it was just like a Twitter video when we saw it. But there's a lot of info on how Valorant's going to look for the next year. Even during all of this stuff, that's a hell of a lot of stuff going on. It's crazy. I remember the reaction when the launch happened and we started seeing the Battle Pass and Reyna and all of this stuff that was added as part of that update. And the fact that they're going to do that every two months is kind of crazy to think about because that was a, quite a shock, honestly. And also the what she says about how the, um, what does she call them, episodes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that they should feel more transformative to the whole game experience. So they will probably try to bundle in new features with that and bigger things that are not just these content drops but also just all these other things around the game maybe at some point that's where we will potentially see some replay uh, type of functionality or something that has to do with the uh, in-game tournament stuff that was sort of leaked or talked about or teased whatever you want to call it and uh, of course the ability to view your own stats in game i could see those types of updates fitting in there as well and uh, yeah regardless two week patch cycle two months for every act and six months for every episode. I, I'm i liking the sound of it. I just don't know if it'll be too overwhelming. I am both excited and terrified because I think it is going to be very overwhelming. And I hope it doesn't burn people out. Another thing that was mentioned that I forgot to even add was the idea of story. Some people aren't interested in it. So that's why I wanted to leave it more towards the end. But you sort of mentioned transformative. We're sort of seeing that a bit more. You know, I mentioned Fortnite before with the events it has in game. Destiny started to do stuff with the the big ship that was blown out of the sky. It would be cool to see those kind of story beats within a game like Valorant. I have no idea how they'd do it, but they did mention Ascent. But just imagine if there was like an extra game mode that you could jump into that has you on Ascent and there's like something happening, a big story, like the Ascent falls from the sky or whatever. And in the middle of your competitive game, <laughs> the whole map just crashes down. <laughs> yeah, maybe not in a competitive game. More like the sort of workshop mode in Fortnite where it's, you know, you're not really doing anything, you can just go out and experience it. But yeah, that would be funny if you're trying to, like, clutch out a map and then suddenly the, the island that you're playing the game on just drops out of the sky if it wasn't stressful enough. But I think the important thing is Valorant seems to be learning a lot of lessons from other games, certainly other free-to-play games that are doing some really cool stuff and want to do their own bits and pieces like that. And that, to me, is... Very interesting and very exciting. Just a final thing that I actually wanted to end on with this video, and now that we've spoken everything about the episodes and the Battle Pass and the new agents and all of that stuff, I'm curious to know how much of you guys in the audience have watched the new Ignition Series tournament set up by Riot. There was the T1 Nerd Street Gamer one. Had like a average viewers or peak viewers of over 50k, I think over 60k at some point. So 
I'm more personally interested in you guys as an audience if you care about the esports scene at all, because, you know, we can look into it a bit more with our content, look at how pros play particular agents, but I really did want to extend that to you and be like, do you care about what's happening in the pro scene or no? I'd be actually really interested to hear everybody's opinion on that, including yours, Miss Scratchley. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's something that we obviously see when it happens, since we keep an eye on Valorant Twitter and so that. We see whenever any tournaments are really going on, obviously you being involved in some as well. Uh, so there's all of that, and I'm sure if you follow us on Twitter, we'll link to the occasional one, so you can check that out if you're interested. But in terms of making videos on it, we're still figuring out where everyone's at with Valorant, what's interesting and not, what we think is fun to make versus what you guys think fun is fun to watch. So yeah, just let us know, and if there's anything in particular you want to see on the channel of course then just drop that down there as well or just at hitscanyt on twitter and let us know on there too give us a follow thanks for watching if there's any more info we'll be sure to do these kind of videos if you like this kind of just discussion kind of news video then do let us know in the comments below we're trying stuff out we just want to like be much more chill with you guys so do let us know in the comments what you think of esports what you think of us the battle passes the new agents all of that stuff big chunk of info thanks for watching guys take care we'll see you then bye bye